Hello, we're at the National Gallery of Ireland. And I have to tell you, it feels like the calm before the storm because within an hour, there's going to be the unveiling here of a very special work of art. Yes, Gareth Reed, the Sky Arts Portrait Artist of the Year 2017, has finished his piece, which is Graham Norton in there. That isn't it, he's behind that. And it's not that abstract. And I'm, are you excited? I'm very excited. Over the past eight weeks, artists have traveled from all over Britain and Ireland to compete for the chance to win this 10,000 pounds commission. Professional artist Gareth Reed first impressed at the Wallace Collection in London with his charcoal drawing of broadcaster Adrian Childs. Gareth's drawing, I love. It is monolithic, isn't it? He then competed alongside six other artists in the semi-final with a portrait of Imelda Staunton. It was a masterclass watching him create this. And after a tense final at the National Portrait Gallery, Gareth's drawing of Tom Courtney and striking commission of the High Court judge, Mrs Justice Chima Grubb, secured his place as winner at this year's competition. Wow, it's just fantastic. This is an absolutely exquisite finished piece of art. Now we follow Gareth to the picturesque coast of Ireland where he will sketch... I really do have resting bitch face. <laughs> photograph... That left hand is sausagey. ..and paint Graham Norton, discovering a remarkable family connection in the process. That's uh, ridiculous. It's... I'm embarrassed for Ireland. When I won the competition, I was overwhelmed and blown away, and I, did, I was kind of dazed. Gareth Reed. Yeah! It's hard to take in, but I was extremely happy. <laughs> the challenge of painting Graham is conveying some of his personality in a subtle way without being too over the top about it. <laughs> He's got a good beard on him, so that's a good thing. I, I enjoy a beard. 41-year-old professional artist Gareth Reed is originally from Belfast. He moved to Glasgow to study illustration at Glasgow School of Art and has stayed there ever since. He lives with his partner Susie and their three daughters, Sylvie, Nessie and Lola, all of whom inspire his work as a portrait artist. It's a huge, huge honour for Gareth, you know, being Irish as well. You know, we're so proud it's really lovely that he's getting the opportunity to, to have his work in the permanent collection in Ireland. Gareth was the year above me at Glasgow School of Art and we were both studying illustration and we went to a party. <laughs> I sat for my dad for a practice and stuff. It's really hard sitting still. Sometimes I do it for dad and he always he always calls me a poser. <laughs> <laughs> You draw dad as well, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've done like lots of drawings on him and sometimes they're quite funny. Sometimes he doesn't even know he's, he's being drawn. <laughs> what part's that? Face. Face, okay. This is a long line of Nessie's recent portraits. This one this is uh, one she did <laughs> on holiday. Me trying to catch a moment to myself reading a book. His scary, <laughs> skinny legs. Bye. <laughs> One of the best things about the competition is the picture will end up in a permanent collection in a major gallery, especially the one in Dublin, because it's quite close to home. It's just everything's kind of fallen into place. Gareth has come to the heart of Dublin to see where his final painting will hang at the National Gallery of Ireland. Built in the mid-19th century, the gallery is home to some of history's finest European art, from Monet to Picasso. Before embarking on painting Graham, Gareth has come to discuss the commission with the gallery's director, Sean Rainbird. Hi, Gareth. Welcome to the gallery. Hey, how are you? 
great, let's go in. This is where we're going to be hanging your portrait okay. when it's ready. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, possibly over there okay. in the Vermeer slot. Okay. <laughs> and it was just when I came in, I was struck by the fact that I was going to have a picture in here. Yeah. It never really added up in my head. It's a wonderful yeah. thing. I mean, yeah. we're really delighted, actually. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's someone we're really keen to have in the collection. Yeah. Have you got any idea in terms of scale of um, the portrait that you want? We've got portraits of all kinds, mm. you know, um, heads down to full length. Mm. The most recent portrait is probably two and a half metres square plus, so it's actually okay, quite yes. a large painting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what your ideas are about that. Well, I'm, well yes, at the moment neither do I. <laughs> I need to go and see Graham first of all, and it will become clear once we've spent a few days with him. Yeah. So it's a fairly open brief then. What you've got to do is now paint it. Okay. <laughs> It's just going to go in place of the Vermeer, <laughs> which is ridiculous, but there, there you have it. Just coming in here, realising that a picture of mine is going to hang in here, it just became quite real there, so I'm slightly amazed by the whole thing. It's great. For his first sitting with Graham Norton, Gareth's come to Bantry House, a stately home built in 1700, set on the west coast of Ireland in County Cork. It's a favourite spot of Graham's. He grew up nearby and now has a home here where he spends 10 weeks every summer. Slightly nervous at the minute just because it's hard to plan anything, so hopefully this first um, sitting will allow me to just get an impression of him and then think, see how he sits and everything and see what he looks like in the flesh. So the house just appearing here, it's beautiful. A great view over Bantry Bay. What a view. Gareth has chosen to do the first sitting in the drawing room of the house. So today I'm just going to do a charcoal drawing, just a head, so I'll just keep it simple. It's good to start actually doing it. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Very well. Nice to meet you. I'm Graham. Hi. How are you? How are you? I'm all right. How are you? I'm fine. You welcome ready? To, welcome to Bantry. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Have you been here before? No, I've never been to Bantry House, but I know I'm quite familiar with the area. Oh, OK. Oh, are you really? Yeah, yeah. Well, What's got to be fascinating is that process of having your portrait picked. I hope we're able to chat. I don't know how he works. Maybe he requires silence. I mean, but you kind of think, if you've decided to go down the portraiture route, you must quite like people. Otherwise, you've chosen a, a horrible job for yourself. This initial bit is really just to talk to the sitter and stare at them. I want permission to stare for, 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 an extended, for an extended length of time. Do I have to choose an expression? You don't have to choose, just your resting expression. <laughs> my choose from this my list. bitch face. <laughs> yeah. Choose from this list of expressions. <laughs> yeah. OK, no, usually just your, your kind of, yeah. yeah, yeah, your resting face. Okay. You know, Try yeah. to look benign. Yeah, look benign, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Big grins are for photos. Yeah, yeah, exa ex yeah, absolutely. OK, I'm looking over here. Um, yeah, OK. OK, so we'll just start. That seems pretty good to me. You grew up around... I grew up in Bandon. Bandon, yeah. Which is about uh, an hour from here. Yeah. Did you spend a lot of time in Dublin? I was born in Dublin. Right, right. But left when I was about two. And how come you know Kerry? We've got a holiday house, our family holiday home. Oh. We've been going for Schneem. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's one of the nice things about living in a small place, like a small country, mm. where everything's local. I love the way people in Ireland talk for no reason. They just, it's like bird song. <laughs> it's just... They, yeah, they're good at it. They, they talk for the pleasure of talking. Yeah, yeah. My mother now, last Christmas, we put her on Facebook. Uh -huh. She loves it. Yeah. Because I'd never seen Facebook in that way. Uh -huh. But for her, Facebook is like the most local news imaginable. <laughs> yeah. You know, if a field floods, yeah, yeah. 
Someone that's, will take a picture of it and post it. Yeah, that's when and, you can't get talking to people, so yeah. Yeah, it's but also, she, she's not leaving the house as much. She's not getting out. Yeah. So she's like, oh, did you see that car crash? Well, yes, I did, because <laughs> there was a picture on the thing. Or, I, I'm uh, up know, to date. Yeah. I'm up to date. Yeah, a tractor, you know, drove into a wall. Yeah. Got it. Right, got it. Yeah. Seen it. My mother loves this program, so she's beyond happy I'm doing it. I don't think I've had my portrait painted before. People have sent me pictures they've done of my head. I got one done entirely out of buttons, which is nice. I did, when I was a student, a penniless a student, I did do, I was a model for life drawing classes. So there must be drawings of me somewhere in Cork. Having a picture in the National Gallery of Ireland is, you know, it's brilliant, but... It is kind of, I mean, yeah. But what do you uh, think? Well, no, it's kind of amazing for both of us. <laughs> yeah. I've seen the spot where it's going to hang. Oh, have you? Yeah. There's currently a Vermeer there. <laughs> <laughs> What's the mirror about? That's just for perspective, really. You just want to see yourself. I'm so <laughs> no, sick we, of looking at him. <laughs> self, I'm, just, we, <laughs> I'm just going to look at my own face for a few minutes. A wee selfie. <laughs> yeah, it's just for perspective, just because you, you lose track of what it actually looks like. You get so caught up in little parts, it, it helps okay. you see it as a whole. I mean, the National Gallery of Ireland, look, that is wildly posh to be in there uh, until People are going, who the hell is that? <laughs> and it's just discreetly removed. But the nice thing is, that no matter what was at the end, there is that reveal. You get to see what he's been doing, whatever he produces. It'll be a delightful surprise. Since winning the competition and then knowing it was Graham, I see him everywhere on TV. So I suppose the impact of it being him is gradually dawning on me. And I think if I do a good picture of him, so many people are going to see it just because it's him. Gareth has three sittings to get to know Graham and work out how best to capture him before painting his final portrait for the National Gallery of Ireland's permanent collection. Gareth Reid is an hour into his first sitting with Graham Norton at Bantry House in County Cork. I heard that you just kind of take two months off and you're here, yeah, yeah for the summer, pretty much. Because I'm contracted to a certain number of shows. So the TV is doable, but the radio, I have to do 42 of them. All right. I don't take any holidays. Yeah. Because most people have lives and half terms and things like that. Yeah. None of that. Yeah, I yeah, just, yeah. I, I'll Blast just it. do them all. Yeah. And then I got to go, well, I believe I have 10 weeks off. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I love just having a big, chunk of time off. Was I paying attention properly? Did you turn that thing upside down? Or yeah. That thing, the yeah, 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 yeah. It's like standing back from something. So it could be either way <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. day. I'm going to make this the top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Us bearded men that are like Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. But it helps you see the little shapes a little bit. It just changes them, see them a bit clearer. Oh, I've got an interesting story. Oh, yeah. I saw the Who Do You Think You Are. Oh, right. Yeah. My dad's side of the family... Yeah? ...were from Ballymena. Oh, really? They were Reynolds. Because my great-grannies are Reynolds. Yeah. Well, they must be related. <laughs> So listen to this, right? So I was trying to clarify it. They had to speak to Cousin Audrey and Ballymena and work it all out. So I said, right, send it to me in uh, writing. So I've got this straight. So he says, I think that James Reynolds, who was featured in the Who Do You Think You Are? Yeah. Was my grandmother's brother. Oh, God. But yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. So what does that mean? I don't... I'll check with my mum tonight. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, we probably are related. Yeah, that's, that's hilarious.
Yeah, it's got a good face to draw, lots of interesting angles, so it's a good subject. You might be used to somebody's face, but it's always different under different lights, different angles. So this is the first sitting, concentrating on the head. You know, look at the geography of the face. <laughs> <laughs> Get to know that. Okay. See how you sit and everything. So, you ready? Okay. Oh, wow. That is a great, I, well, that isn't what I was expecting. Mm. The uh, eyes are really good. Yeah. It's more of a sculptural kind of... Yeah, thing. no, it is. Well, it's yeah. more like a carving of me yeah. than a, than <laughs> yeah, a drawing. Yeah. 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 I really do have resting bitch face, though. <laughs> you were, it, was, it was getting sterner and sterner as, <laughs> as time went As on. the flesh fell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's yours, you can have that. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's very yeah. kind. Thank, God, yeah. thank no you very problem. much. No I'm problem. Sure where I'll put Pleasure. It. <laughs> if it'll go to my mother. <laughs> yeah, good idea. Yeah, yeah, She'd yeah. love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing that all those lines do turn into a really good representation of my head. Because of that Irish connection, I think we might be related, uh, but quite closely related. His father's a Reynolds, and my mother was also a Reynolds. But my mother will know, one way or the other, and she will be, that will be the definitive proof. As a professional artist, Gareth has made the shortlist of the BP Portrait Awards at the National Portrait Gallery five times. One of the featured portraits of his daughter impressed Gareth's gallery owner in Dublin. The study of his daughter, Lola, really did stand out to us because it's a very tender study. It has that very muted palette, which I think is so appealing in Garrett's work. We see her beautiful blue eyes, but the tones are very, very controlled, so nothing jars in the image. Gareth is very affable, a very warm individual, and that really helps when you're a portrait painter because he, he builds up a rapport with his subjects, and that comes across in the work we're getting a glimpse into a private relationship between two people. In terms of his skill as a draftsman and the compositions of his work and his use of colour, he really has mastered the craft of painting and drawing. Gareth works hard to capture a mood with his portraits, whether they're commissions for big institutions or intimate family pictures. This is Susie here. Lola's in there. 14 now. That was actually on the day of her due date, so it's called, it's called the date. You can convey some atmosphere quite quickly with charcoal, so you just do the basic drawing first of all, and then it's just tons and tons of scribbling and taking it off with the rubber and then putting it back on, and so eventually over time you get things disappearing, things going over and around. I think it builds up that way. As well as creating his own work, Gareth also helps to inspire other artists by teaching portraiture at Strathclyde University, as well as life drawing classes for mature students here in rural Strathblane. Let's have a wee look. This space between the knee and the back of the knee. What do you think? No. <laughs> I've got a few regulars that come. It's quite a convivial atmosphere and I make lunch for them and everything, so I treat them pretty good. Looks like she's smoking a wee pipe now. <laughs> I feel hugely privileged being a pupil of Gareth. He's very motivating. I feel my, my work's really come on uh, under Gareth's tuition. I was very happy that he had become Portrait Artist of the Year. He's one of the most uh, outstanding portrait artists certainly we have in Scotland. It's a huge accolade for a living artist to be in the National Gallery's permanent collection. It'd be so good for Garrett's profile as an artist to have painted such a, a notable figure. 
it's really going to take Garrett's career to a whole other level. Over the next few sittings, Gareth will need to scratch beneath the surface of Graham Norton's public persona to create a portrait worthy of the National Gallery of Ireland. Portrait Artist of the Year, Gareth Reed, has won a commission to paint one of Britain's best-loved broadcasters for the National Gallery of Ireland. Before his second sitting with Graham Norton, Gareth's come to explore Graham's local area with his sketchbook. Hi, how are you doing? Hello. Do you mind if I draw you while you're fishing? No problem. Yeah? You're supposed to keep a sketchbook and draw all the time, just keep it on you and draw. So it kind of keeps your practice going, keeps you looking. When these are full, it's quite a nice little thing to look back on. It's just gorgeous, isn't it? It's so nice when the sun shines in Ireland. It's hard, it's, it's hard to beat. <laughs> Did you live in Bantry all your life? Yeah. yeah. I'm just living out in the same areas where Graham is. Have you met him before? I have. I have a picture of him at home with me. Have you? Up in the mantelpiece, yeah. yeah. You got a selfie with him? I have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's very nice. He's very, very easy to talk to? Yeah, approachable. That's not one bit like me. No. I swear to God, I don't think he can sketch at all. <laughs> Get the hell out of it. My son can draw better than you. <laughs> Listen, thanks very Thank much. Thank you. Right? Good to see you. For Garrett's second sitting with Graham, he's chosen an outdoor location at Bantry House in order to observe his subject in a different light. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Very well, you're very optimistic of the Irish summer. <laughs> yeah, it's going to last for another few hours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know, I've got to change the tracky bees in the, in the boot there. Uh, where am I? You're oh, there? Obviously, obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not uh, there. Unless. Yeah. No, no, I'm right. Yeah. We're going to try and do the other angle this time, maybe so. Oh, so I'm looking. Well, just look, look kind of over my shoulder. I don't want to you know, okay. make you sit in there. <laughs> <laughs> like a <Yeah. laughs> um, thoughtful Graham. Thoughtful Graham. That's good for me if it's good for you. Great for me. It's perfect. Okay. Couldn't be better. Well, I have information for you. I spoke to my mother. Oh yes, and she can confirm. And this is like this is crazy, that my great grandfather was the brother of your great grandmother. You're joking? Yeah. That's no ridiculous. Way. I know. <laughs> That's that ridiculous. is. I know Ireland's small, <laughs> but still. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, actually, um, my mother was saying, "Does uh, does your dad have an email?" Yeah. Yeah, she'd email him with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So you wanted to come back to Ireland and spend some time here? Yeah. I like coming back here. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like home. Yeah. Um, it's, I think it's that thing about getting older, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And did it not feel like home for a while and then it did, or the connection Yeah, no, when I left, I left. I never thought I'd come back at all. Yeah. Then it was only really when my dad died. That's when I kind of got to know Ireland again. And, you know, Ireland had changed so much in that intervening 20 years. Yeah. I had too, you know, I'd sort of gone away to prove myself and come back and you feel like a different person. Yeah. What about you? Did you get out of Dodge or was it just a, a natural thing? Um, it was just an art school thing, you know. So many people from Belfast go to university in Scotland, so it seemed kind of natural. Yeah.
Why did you choose Bantry House? I mean, it's one of the most beautiful sites yeah. for a house. You know, all the stuff behind me, Bantry Bay. Yeah. Wherever you go that Irish people have been, mm -hmm. there's a Bantry Bay. There's a Bantry Bay in Cape Town, a yes, Bantry yeah, Bay yeah, in New yeah, York, yeah. Bantry Bay, you know, there's Bantry Bays everywhere. But also, because I can remember when I was coming here as a kid, this house was like a slice of foreign. There's water jugs from Tibet, there's things from India. It was a kind of little tiny window on the world, yeah. which I, I loved it. So just thinking about the position of the final portrait, is there any particular place here that, that would make sense to you? Well, or? it's kind of up to you, because I don't want to give you something like really annoying. Yeah, it's too <laughs> hard, it's too hard. <laughs> yeah, I'd like all of Bantry Bay, <laughs> and I'd like my head like this big. <laughs> As long as I recognise it, as long as I'm not thinking, why am yeah. I sitting on a New York st yeah. street? Yeah. <laughs> there weren't traffic lights behind me, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. it's got to look like Ireland, I think. Yes, I'd yeah. like it to look like Ireland. Yes. And I'd like it to be kind of the Irish version of me, kind of the more kind of relaxed. Yes, well, that's the other thing I was going to say. So your kind of persona that people know, do you think that's pretty representative? That's my showbiz yeah, yeah. thing. So, so, you know, I, here I, I don't think I have a suit here. Yeah, yeah. So it's more jumpers and anoraks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like you? I feel. You I feel more relaxed here than anywhere yeah. else. Yes, everyone knows me, but actually, I know an awful lot of them as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's Jerry the postman. Yeah. That's you know Tom mm. the butcher. There's Matty from the car wash, and I'm Graham off the telly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we all <laughs> yeah, know yeah. each I've other. Got, you've got, got a role. Yeah. But I, I'm always shocked at how at ease people are. You know the kind of natural chattiness of. People in Ireland. Yes, heart on sleeve. Heart on I'd sleeve, say. yeah, yeah. Well, it's a weird thing. Because, like, I remember my granny used to do it. There's, um, you know, she'd be horrified that anyone would know her business. But then when we walked into a shop, yeah, she'd <laughs> she immediately would, she would be like, blah, 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 <laughs> telling the person behind the counter everything. <laughs> <laughs> We all look in a mirror, we kind of arrange ourselves and you do your hair just right, you tuck your shirt in and put it out of it. And in your head, you can believe that's how you look all day. Isn't that, that isn't how you look all day. Television teaches you that very, very quickly, where you get to see great rolls of fat in your suit and all that sort of stuff. So I think what will be interesting about this, far more than a photographer, you are seeing what someone else sees. It's not a captured image, it's a sort of created image and it's through the prism of someone's eyes. Okay. I get to see my face again. <laughs> <laughs> the eyes of another. Okay. <laughs> this is how the queen must feel. <laughs> Endlessly seeing portraits of herself. <laughs> oh, wow. So not what I was expecting. Yeah, yeah. kind of different this time. Yeah. I think I look slightly more benign this time. Yeah. That looks very summery. Yeah. You've <laughs> captured the, the mood of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I worked on benign today. That was my note for myself, benign. And I like this. It's quite jarring, the contrast between the ink and the pencil. It gives it a sort of three-dimensional quality. It is ridiculous that we might be related. Well, I think, no, not that we might, we are related. You know, my mother has given it the seal of approval, so I'm pretty confident. Family reunion at the, yeah, at the unveiling. So my dad will come down and meet up with his mum. <laughs> with only one sitting left, Gareth has come to get inspiration from some of his favourite artwork at the National Gallery of Ireland, alongside which his final painting will hang. So this is Le Déjeuner by Pierre Bonnard, who's one of my all-time favourite painters. He's almost like a magician or something, the way he puts together colour. It's a wee bit like that kind of advent of photography influencing cropping and so you've got half a person there, the edge of a table with a bit of a cake. It's almost like he's too good to be influential, you know, it's, you see some people's work, you can see how it's doable, but for him I can't really understand how you could make the paintings work. So that's why I just think it's just pure magic and uh, that's why I love it so much. This is quite a famous Rodin head called Man with a Broken Nose. 
for a start, he's got a great face. Not only does he make a good sculpture model, he'd probably make a great painting as well. One of the great things about this one is that he's kind of focusing on a blemish, which is a broken nose. It's not that anatomically correct. It's all quite lumpy, and but it's just it's completely convincing. The way the nose has been broken looks like he just could have just squashed it at the end there. A lot of artists like looking for those imperfections. So yeah, so Graham Norton, better watch out. <laughs> Gareth has just one more meeting with Graham to work out how best to capture the man behind the entertainer for his final portrait. At Bantry House in County Cork, it's Gareth's last chance to study Graham Norton before starting his commission for the National Gallery of Ireland. Gareth decided to spend the session taking photos in order to help him decide on the final commission. Hello. Another lovely summer's day. I know. <laughs> Do you think this would be good for you for a backdrop? I mean, I like it. Yeah. It's, it's very Irish, it's very yeah. bantry. Those clouds are amazing over there. Yeah. You know, looking directly into the camera or... Yeah. Had you any thoughts about that? Um, no, no. I had no thoughts. I hadn't even crossed <laughs> I had my mind. Zero thoughts. Uh, <laughs> it can be more contemplative if you're looking yes. away or looking down, or it's because this is holiday ground. Yeah, this is holiday ground. Yeah. I'm asleep or drunk. <laughs> <laughs> So did you like the idea of drama from when you were at school? Or? Yeah, you know, it seemed like the dossiest job you could get. Oh. But no one was interested in me acting. Right, OK. Uh, what were they interested in? Well, they weren't interested in me at all. OK, right, OK. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, was that comedy or...? It was anything, I didn't care what it was. Anything. The few jobs I had, I played a dead body in a British telecom training film, which I had to audition for. See if you could hold your breath yeah, really. for long enough. <laughs> And that was in Panto and Harrogate. Right, okay. But that was not, because at drama school, they train you to be a star. Yeah, yeah. They train, you know, yeah. no one trains you to kind of go, the coffee's ready, <laughs> or yeah. the people from the village have come to get you. So actually, the reality of yeah. being an actor is miserable. So, how did it all happen then? Was, was oh. Father Ted one of the first things that you did? Well, it was sort of, yes. After I gave up on acting, I started writing my own stuff. Yeah. And I did Edinburgh for about eight years. I got a posh new agent out of Edinburgh. And the posh agent also represented Graham Linehan and Arthur Matthews, oh, okay. who wrote Father, Father Ted. Ted yeah. So she was on the phone to them, kind of going, look, I've just signed somebody Irish. Yeah. There must be something for him in Father Ted. <laughs> and I got it, and it went well. And then very nicely, they wrote me into a few more episodes. Being in Father Ted, that's like an iconic, you know, it it's is like now. this, yeah. Now people write books and make documentaries yeah. about yeah. it, and it is the kind of the, the only cool job I've ever had. <laughs> to give Gareth a variety of images, they come inside to the conservatory to finish off the photo session. So that face is more animated now, I see. There's yes, a, there's like, a, there's yes. a hit. So you can just increase it incrementally, can you? Yeah. <laughs> it's great control. If we could do something with that left hand. <laughs> this one? Yeah, it's just because at the minute it's sausagey because they're coming. Yeah, that's, that's my... <laughs> that's it. It's really complicated. I've tried my sausagey fingers. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> I looked on the website trying to work out what you call somebody whose great-grandfather is the brother of your... Yeah. Third cousins. Oh, we're third cousins? Third cousins. Like, I, like that that's ridiculous. Is, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I'm, oh, I'm embarrassed for Ireland. Yeah. I'm embarrassed for Ireland <laughs> that two people are in a time of a programme together and they're third cousins. Yeah. <laughs> There's me and my sister. My mom has one brother. My dad has one sister. So, you know, we're not a big, one of those huge Irish families. So to end up meeting a relative is mad. Okay, 
Okay, that's us, I think. Uh, well, thank you so much. Well, that was great. I think it went well. So well see, I really enjoyed it. Thank yeah. you very much. Brilliant. All right, okay, take thanks. I'll, I'll, see I'll, see, I'll see you in Dublin. We're both on the same page that, you know, we're both Irish. We're in Ireland. It's hanging in the National Gallery here. So we'd like it to kind of reflect that. Mm -hmm. So I'd like it to be the Irish version of me, which is more relaxed. I like the way he's sitting, it's kind of natural. The hands are good. It's a nice, could be a, com a nice composition. But I would put Bantry Bay in the background. So that's the kind of thing that I'm looking for. After three days of working with Graham in person, Gareth returns home to Glasgow. Before he starts to paint, he does a series of sketches to help him decide on the composition for the final portrait. I looked through all the photographs that we took on the day. I chose one that was kind of side on like that. The next thing I did was photocopy that like 10 times or something. And then so then I could play with the composition lots and lots of times. So some of them are more expansive than others. Some include more sky, some are wider. If it doesn't work, that's just put in the bin. Do I want him to engage the viewer or do I want to make a different version where he's more relaxed and he's specifically not engaging the viewer? That's quite a big decision. While Gareth's studies have been in charcoal and pencil, for the Finnish commission, he's chosen to use oils. So I'm going to mix it with like a reddy brown colour to start with, to draw with. This is the good bit. It's the end that's the hard bit where you're trying to make it all work, but this is the exciting part. The first part of the process is just really getting big blocky shapes and seeing if it's OK, but things inevitably move all the time. It's a bit like you're trying to solve an equation that you don't really know the answer to, but it's exciting because everything's open. This is a pretty big canvas, so when you're working, you're standing very close to it, so you have no idea about proportion. That's why the mirror's here. You just get a bit of distance from it. So when I moved back, the head was too small, so the head's bigger. My work has got a lot of sculptural emphasis, but it's not hard-edged. I love stuff disappearing and being more soft-edged. Having an atmosphere in it is really, really important. Just the feeling of the sitter being there. You've got a picture of what it looks like in your head, and it looks really good at this stage. The reality hasn't dawned yet, <laughs> yet. You've got to correct and get closer to and scrape off and start again. It's not like a linear thing that you just start and then move closer and closer to the finish. You kind of go backwards and forwards, obliterate and wreck it and fix it. It's the process. It's the day of the big unveiling, and a crowd has gathered to see the finished portrait. I'm actually really excited at this point because I've done as well as I could have done, I think. At the start, it was a wee bit dodgy because there were a few... I moved the composition around probably three or four times. But as soon as I arrived in the composition, I knew it was going to be not a uh, total humiliation. So it's always a good sign. Before the final reveal, one very important family reunion has to take place. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? How are you? Tony. Tony. How are you? Tony. This is Gareth. Hello. Hello. How, are Hello. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. And you tell me you're weird and easy. I think you're my second cousin. I'm two, but that way got third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's mummy's granddad. Yes, James, my grandmother was one of fourteen, and she had a brother called James Reynolds. 1874, he was born, yeah, yeah. and he was married to my granny in 1895 when he was 21. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic, isn't it? That's Hello. Right. Hi. I was just standing back admiring the family resemblance. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone gathered around here. 
<laughs> I mean, it, you know, it could be the cause. Yeah. <laughs> Apart from the odd change in gender. Here well, it'll all depend what song we sing with the dad, okay. you know. Well, I'm, I'm sure the four of you will be singing, surely. <laughs> Just before this gets unveiled, this, me, I, I really just want to say thank you to Gareth, because you made this such a, uh, well, until now, such a pleasant <laughs> experience. Um, I can't speak for a moment's time. Uh, I genuinely look forward to seeing it, even though it is my I'm face. I'm excited, yeah. You're not excited, are you, Gareth? <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited, you yeah. feel sick. Yeah. <laughs> I am desperate to see this. OK. This is the culmination of Sky Arts Portrait Artist of the Year 2017. I hate to do the obvious thing, but what do you think of it, Graham? I really like it. I look so intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I was worried because I really love Garrett's charcoal, and I had no idea you could paint like this. It's, it's <laughs> really. Maybe you should have won. <laughs> <laughs> but the other thing is that it captures something about you that gives us access to your inner self that we wouldn't normally be familiar with. And I think that's an enormous thing to have achieved. I recognise myself in it. That is an expression that's on my face a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just not on your programme. No, exactly, it's not on my yeah. programme, but that... It's just what we wanted. Yeah, that is what I, I spend most of my time looking like that. <laughs> yes. You know what? He's painted your soul, Graham. That's what it is. Whoa. That's what it is, yes. And one of my favourite cardigans. <laughs> yeah. I find the two are often closely aligned. <laughs> yeah, I'm honestly, I'm thrilled. I love it. Good. That's a relief. That's a relief. Even without me in it, that would be quite a nice line. Escape <laughs> <laughs> up to the sea and the sky would be lovely. You should have bay. done it so he could be peeled off. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. You it's you like very it? good. You it's like it? very good. It's, it's lovely. Are you pleased with it? Yeah, I'm pleased, yeah. Well, I'm I think um, you should be very proud of it. Thank you. I really do. You've done him proud and yourself. Are you pleased with the result? Actually, I'm really delighted. You know, from my point of view, it's, it's the man, not the entertainer, because, you know, he's, he's wearing, a, obviously, a, a lovely old cardigan he's very comfortable in. He's a very jumpy performer, but this is him really being at rest. And that's very rewarding for someone to look at, I think. Yes, I think it will really draw the eye out. And the other lovely thing is it places him in a very Irish context. You know, you often have the rather damp, grey, sort of misty feel, which is very, very beautiful for the colour scales from, you know, blue, turquoisey greens down to greys, and, and I think Gareth has really captured that brilliantly well. Having it in here, looking at all the bonards and the Picassos and everything, it looks good, I think, and the reaction was good, so I'm just, I, could, I couldn't hope for any more at the end, really, I'm just so happy.